Start your habit of continuous learning today. Visit nomadphp.com. Welcome to Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. I'm Joe Ferguson. Nomad PHP Lightning Talks are 10-minute talks that give a high-level overview or an in-depth look at a small portion of a PHP-related topic. Lightning Talks are a great way for new speakers to build their speaking resume and for longtime speakers to test drive new talk ideas. If you'd like to give a 10-minute Lightning Talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com. I have a little confession that when I named this title, or that when I titled this talk, I wasn't really sure what I was thinking. It probably wasn't a great title. I had maybe a brain cramp when I was thinking about this, because if you go by the title, you can't really Composer require Vagrant. You can't install Vagrant with Composer, uh, at least not any of the ways I tried. So to kind of own up to that and give you something better, the next best thing is I'll show you how to add Vagrant to your PHP application in three commands using Composer, and some other things. So before you continue, stop, pause this video, go watch this other video. Uh, it's Easy Vagrant with Laravel Homestead. It's the basic introduction video into Homestead. Uh, go watch that, then come back and continue watching this video, and you'll know a lot more what, about what's going on. So we're going to start off with a basic Slim PHP application. This is the project skeleton that a lot of Slim PHP developers start out with when they're first getting started with the framework. I haven't done anything to this yet. I have just cloned it down to a folder, and the next thing we're going to do is run the first of our three commands. So command number one is Composer Require Dev Laravel Homestead. We're going to require the Homestead project as a dev dependency in our Slim app, and it's going to download everything it needs. So that was command number one. Command number two, we're going to run PHP vendor bin homestead make. And this is a binary uh, application that Homestead provides, and it installs everything into the root of our project that we need to spin up a new Vagrant environment. Command number three, we can just run Vagrant up from here. And this will bring up our slim PHP VM with our virtual box provider. This assumes that you previously watched the first video and that you have VirtualBox or some other provider installed and you have the Homestead box already installed. You also should already know that we're forwarding ports just like we were in the previous video and in other versions of Homestead or other instances of Homestead where if you were running Homestead globally, it's still the same ports. We're just doing this per project. So what exactly happened? Well, we required our Homestead dependency into Composer. That was our first command. Our second command was the vendor bin homestead make, which runs and copies the files from the homestead folder to our project root and, cu and customizes uh, one of the main configuration files uh, for us. Then we run Vagrant up, which actually tells Vagrant, hey, let's do something with this virtual machine that we just created. This is also known as the per project installation, as I just mentioned. You can check this out in the official Laravel docs. Uh, it's under the Homestead. You should look for per project installation. There's also some extra things that I'm not going to cover uh, in this talk that you can go find in the documentation uh, that allows you to further customize this. So if we look at our, our VM and we check out localhost on port 8000, we'll know that that's being routed to our Homestead VM and it's now serving our Slim framework application. So it forwards port 8000 to port 80 on the VM and you can see we just have the default view. Now, if you've ever worked with Vagrant before, how, do you, how does this even work, right? Because you usually have to have some big Ruby Vagrant file that does all these things for you. Well, Homestead simplifies all of that. With Homestead, you're only really manipulating this homestead.yaml file, which is the configuration file that powers Homestead. The top of the file, we set a lot of our VM settings, whether we're setting I, uh, the IPs, how much memory we want to, we want to provide the guest VM, the number of CPUs. We can also set the name of the box and the host name. And our default is for a provider is a virtual box. Uh, you can use VMware Fusion. You can use Parallels. Uh, anything that Homestead supports, you can use. We're going to set our SSH keys. We're also mapping some folders. And this is where Homestead per project differs a little bit than if you were using Homestead globally. Here, we're actually mapping the root of the project that you're running the make command from to this folders map. So you see I have this full path, and then it maps it to that home uh, slash vagrant slash slim PHP folder in the VM. The reason we do this is to make it easier for you, the developer, to not have to worry about copying and pasting uh, long paths in. But this also means that you can't really version control your homestead.yaml. So if you have to do a lot of heavy customizations to this file, my recommendation is to 
copy it in like you would do a, an environment example where it would be like homestead.yaml.exe or uh, ex example, uh, something that allows you to kind of share with your colleagues or your coworkers or your contributors what some generic defaults would be. That way when they run the homestead, homestead make command, they can just copy those changes in. Well, what if you need some other package that Homestead doesn't provide? And if you watch the other video, you know Homestead provides a ton of stuff. If you need something else, you can go back to the Homestead make command and you can run this after the flag. So you'll say PHP vendor bin Homestead make and then we'll do dash dash after. And this adds the after.sh bash script into the root of your project. Now you don't have to worry about this overriding any of your changes in your homestead.yaml. We only will copy files in the make command if they don't exist. So what this means is you can run this command over and over. You're never gonna overwrite anything. However, if you do break something, you can just go delete the files and then run the command again and it will put them back in as their safe defaults, which should get you back up and running if you ever break anything. So this after.sh that's now in your project root, this is where you can add something like Elasticsearch or you can do uh, some further customization. Typically what I do for my projects where I have a lot of database uh, test data that I don't necessarily have set up in my models or, or sorry, set up in my migrations or my database seeders, uh, or if I'm not even using a Laravel app like this, if I want test data, I have a SQL file usually in my project and here's where I'll dump that SQL file into MySQL uh, or Postgres or whatever you want to use for your database engine. So that's a typical use case for the uh, the after sh. But really, you can do whatever you can do in a bash script. You can run from here. Now, whenever you edit that after sh, you have to reprovision the machine. And sometimes that gets kind of weird because Homestead does do uh, some provisioning every time it runs. And if you run that multiple times, it can get a little weird. Sometimes uh, things get done twice and things may not act right. My recommendation is to just go ahead and do a vagrant destroy. Uh, we're doing a vagrant destroy dash F here, which is a shortcut, so it won't ask us to confirm that we want to destroy the VM. And then we'll do vagrant up again, and it'll just reboot the box and come back up with a clean version of the box, redo everything, and at the end, it will run our after.sh, which will do whatever we had told that to do. Now, this just isn't for slim PHP and Laravel frameworks. Homestead also supports Symfony and, and Statamic right out of the box, as well as Silverstripe. Uh, vhost. So what we're doing here is you can tell the sites that you're mapping into Homestead that they are of a certain type. Symphony 2, Satamic, and then uh, Silverstripe, and there's also uh, one or two others. What this does is when we create the vhost when you're running the provisioning for Homestead, it uses a different vhost based on the type. That way you can get one that has predetermined defaults for Symphony or Satamic or anything else that you want to support. It's just as easy as adding a new uh, type to Homestead. That's all I have. Thanks for joining us for another Nomad PHP Lightning Talk. If you'd like to give a Lightning Talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com.